Hello and welcome to Weekly Install, episode 27. Me, your host, Benny McNamara, and I am joined around the table by Connor Barrett. Hi. And Bran Gagic. Hello. Guys, since we last got together and recorded a podcast, loads of stuff has happened. By loads of stuff, I mean nothing. I mean one thing has happened. Me and Connor. Oh, yeah. We went to see Edge of Ultron. Yeah. Wow, wow, we were. What a movie. But we'll talk about that later on, maybe. Yeah. Um, right, anything else happened since we last got together, Con? Anything happened in your life? What's happened in the world of Con? Um, I registered to vote. Nice. That's a boy. Cool. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> Bren, um, what has happened to you since we last recorded, since we last got together? Um, Nothing. No, nothing. I haven't done anything. Penny, has that happened to you since the last oh, time yeah. we recorded? Well, now that you mention it, <laughs> last Tuesday, I got up to make myself a cup of coffee and been to Scatterbrain I am. I threw in a tea bag instead. Mad. Oh, I... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I waited for Ian to come back that evening. I was like, Ian, I have a story for you. <laughs> we laughed. Do you remember that scene in Ted where he gets the stuff and put back in? Can I just stop you? I was genuinely excited for like three seconds. <laughs> same here. Until you talking. <laughs> Are you saying my story is disappointing? No. Well, um, what else happened? So, um, oh. I bought new, I bought new shoes today. I really like them. <laughs> Start a brand. It's been a slow week, right? And neither of you brought anything to the table. Um, I downloaded. Oh, I'll give them that. I downloaded a cool Battlefront <clears throat> um wallpaper from my laptop. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, I have to download GTA again. Yeah, we don't know why. Has that got anything to do with the bands? See, that's the Hardly. Thing. Rockstar, are, they're going all tour on everybody now at the minute, and they're swinging around their massive band hammer, and it looks like it's after slapping you across the jaw, maybe. A little bit. You have to download another 15, nearly 16 gigs. Right, we have it up on screen here. Right, at least that's... Earlier on, when we first looked at this, it was... Uh, one day something I think it was like 34 gig out of 55 and I said there was like 21 hours remaining at least now we're at almost 40 gig and there's only there's only eight and a half hours yeah that's a full working day but stupid is what it is it is why can't we just have our mods for yeah GTA? no it's weird especially when <clears throat> I wonder like obviously mods for GTA 4 were a massive thing yeah, there were some really cool ones, but I don't see how that would have kind of negatively impacted anyone's perception of the game. Or now I know the whole online thing is one thing, but there, there's reports that they're banning people for using single player mods. Yeah. That people are yeah. getting banned online and all together, which is a bit, bit mad. Stupid. Supposedly, I was reading on it. Supposedly, it's because the assets of online and single player are shared. So when you mess up one, you're sort of messing with the other, so just the banning just happens sort of automatically. I, I think they should set up <clears throat> no saying this actually. They can't they don't even have proper online servers that work properly. Yeah. But they should set up like just a separate server, like right, money doesn't work. Oh, see so yeah, I don't know, then you wouldn't go on those servers then I suppose and I don't yeah. know. But no, yeah. Maybe a separate server. You can't progress. Oh, I don't know how, what way it'd work, actually. There has to be... There should have release a new game mode where it's like, you can just do whatever. There's tanks everywhere. Everything's just there available to have fun because... Yeah, no, I think what they should do is have your normal kind of everyday servers like we play on on PS4 and stuff at the minute. Mm. But even on PS4, I think they should just... <clears throat> they should just add... Sandbox mode. A sandbox mode. Where at start you can no like and toggle on and off cops, toggle on and off ammo. Do you know what I mean? Like just let you mess around because if people have somewhere to go do that, you might be less inclined to try cheating the real game. Yeah. yeah. And it would just be good on crack as well. Everyone going around on tanks. Yeah, not to each other's up. To do bar just mess about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, no missions, no nothing. You know, that'd be cool. Because it does take a while to get money in GTA. Yeah. yeah. One thing. That doesn't take a while to get money in, is if you're that little company, Playtonic, who put their ukulele Kickstarter up for what is the spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie. It does look pretty cool, yeah, to be it honest. Blue past, just click onto that there, Con. 
it went up onto Kickstarter with a funding target of £175,000. And it reached that in 38 minutes. Wow. What? I didn't even read this. Oh, wow. this is... Yeah. What? Yeah. No, it reached that... Like, it's at 1.2 or 3 million. Probably more now, to be honest. Um, But ukulele, I think it looks really cool. Like, I don't know about G. Like, did you have the Nintendo 64 and stuff? Nope. No, no, I didn't. I saw their little video of what it looks like and stuff and your man commenting like Kickstarter video mm. probably link to that down in the description but it does look cool like I'm really looking forward to it it's an old school big open collect a platformer thing which we haven't properly seen they kind of they, they kind of died out in the with the Nintendo 64 um, but it just looks like a good crack your two little characters Yuka, the chameleon, and Lely, the bat. And you work together using each of their abilities to get through the levels and stuff. Uh, it looks really cool. It's after hitting its funding targets anyway, so it's going to be coming to all platforms in October 2016, I think is the plan right now. Yeah. But it's yeah, we have it up here. Still 42 days to go as well. Yeah. What? 1.3 million. Is That's so Pounds. far. So Closer to 1.4 million, yeah. really. 41,000 backers. Yeah, it's doing it's doing pretty good. And it looks really nice. For a game they've only been working on for three months, the assets and everything they've shown off looks super polished for something that's... And who who is making it? Uh, Platonic are a team made up of ex-Rare developers. Okay. So the guys who made all everyone's favourite. See, the thing with Rare, Rare is a weird one. Rare were one of the biggest third-party companies on the Nintendo 64. They made... Donkey Kong, Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day. They made all them games. Then they got purchased by Microsoft. Then they released uh, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts on the Xbox 360, which didn't go over too well. It wasn't a bad game, but it wasn't... It was a weird sequel to a franchise that people loved. And then they just kind of got rolled up into Connect, and they made, like, Connect Sports, and they just became a Connect studio. So a lot of the people who were originally there <coughs> left the company to form Platonic to make what they like. So we get ukulele as a result of everything. That's class. Looking yeah. at the kind of, what you call them? Rewards. The rewards, yeah. And how much you have to donate. It's a pity there's not a console version. Oh, There's a console digital edition console there. Console digital, yeah. Well, that's what I was saying too. Like there is, if you scroll down further, there is boxed copies of the game available as well but Price I don't know if they're on yeah. PC or 70 pound they're on console, console. 70 pound but that's the physical game soundtrack manual that's like a collector's edition you'd spend yeah. that on a normal game you were saying about Rare that was a weird one they have a new game supposedly coming at E3 I read but yeah actual Rare apparently yeah. have well it's not really Rare everybody's sort of left it's just well it's like Infinity Ward is still going even though the two founders are gone yeah to respawn isn't it yeah yeah but yeah no it's still like Rare still it still has a name behind it it's still like people people like Rare people like what they did and it looks like with Platonic they're going to move on and keep doing what people kind of hoped they would have done on Xbox but the good thing is they're not a Microsoft studio anymore so it's coming to Xbox PlayStation PC everything everything yeah I'm personally I'm really looking forward to it we kind of maybe link the Kickstarter video or the Kickstarter page maybe down yeah. in the description. If you feel like it's something you'd like to back, go for it. Another company that is not lacking in cash these days is Sony, who recently announced that the PS4 has shipped 22.3 million units worldwide with 2 million sales alone in the UK, which is kind of crazy. Apparently, go on. It's outselling or out, outsold the PS2? Yeah. It's out pacing the PS2 at the minute <clears throat> it's selling on average more units over the same time than the PS2 did which is crazy considering the PS2 is Sony's most successful console to date like 150 million most. plus consoles sold of PS2 worldwide yeah um, and again though with PS4 only out as long as it is and to already be at the 22 million mark is kind of insane yeah it's good for us though more games yeah. And reading here as well, Microsoft, Xbox One, 
Um, their worldwide figures is close to 10 million. Oh my goodness. And by the looks of it, they combine Xbox One and 360 earnings together. Just as like general Xbox sales. Yeah. So. Damn. Jesus. The, no, the Xbox One has to be <clears throat> up there like what? 12, 13 million. Well, they're saying 10. Close to 10 million. <clears throat> but that was a few months ago. Mm. Well, that's their earnings. So, does that mean units? Is 10 million units of Xbox One? That could mean also shipped. Well, no, because they say earnings, so they've made money from it. Yeah. So, it's not as if it's... Because shipped means just that they're sitting in stores. Yeah, yeah. Sold yeah. means they're sitting in homes. Um, That's that's crazy. I didn't realize there was such a big disparity. I knew PS4 was outdoing Xbox One, but I didn't realize there was such a big disparity between the two, sales-wise. Sony was just smart. They're marketing. Go Sony. To start, yeah. Sony. They need it anyway. And in fairness, they're doing a good job of kind of like cutting the cost to like raise their thin profits. Because that's, that's what they didn't do with the PS3 is what they just yeah. made a stupid price. It cost, PS4, PS3 cost $800 to make and they were selling it for 6 so does it actually cost eight hundred dollars? Back in the day when they first released it, yeah. PS3. PS3. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they were making like they were just bleeding money. Ridiculous. You know, yeah. Sony seemed to get it right with PS4 all right. Definitely. If only the like, Vita was doing as good. The PS4 is Sony's milkshake and it's bringing everybody to the yard. <laughs> I think though that like it's nice to have a handheld. But you know the way they're kind of cutting down on their comp- dif- different companies on like they're not making laptops and stuff now. Well, Sony's number one music music money generator at the minute is PS4. Yeah. Like that's the most successful thing yeah. in the company. But well, their the computer making, game division. Is the Vita making much money at all, really? It's still selling. It's down on previous year's sales. I think last year they sold 4.2 million or something, and they only sold 3.4 million this year. I think with the same, where well, we're getting the reports, like the same financial um, earnings, revenue, profit thing they put out. Yeah. Kind of, they did have Vita numbers in there and it's not selling as much as it was, but it's it's still in the millions. Do you it's know? still sold more than the Wii U. Yeah, poor, poor yeah, Wii U. Poor Nintendo. The only thing is though, like, we say poor Nintendo, like the Wii U is not doing massive numbers, but the Wii 3DS's. Well, oh, yeah. 3DS, like, yeah. just their handhelds are... The, the, <coughs> the Wii Sony's did well doing, though. Oh, Wii yeah, did unbelievable. 100 million. But the Wii had the problem of shipping units and that was kind of it. Like, I know any amount of people who have Wii's in boxes and cupboards not been used. Granted, they got yeah. to people's homes, but that was kind of the start and end of that. Yeah. People bought the Wii, and then the Wii Fit, played around with it with the family for a few days, and like, all right, we'll just pack this up now. What? You, you know yourself, Con, like, working in a game store, the amount of secondhand, like, there's always secondhand Wii's in store. Yeah, yeah, There's a lot less of everything else. Yeah. Do you think they're going to scrap... The Wii U, do you think, with the new console maybe being announced? I think so. Yeah, there's talk about alright. Yeah. So, so yeah. we'll wait and see. E3's not a million miles away. They're announcing uh, E3, aren't they? Well, or are they? I don't know, because they kind of made mention to it in a like Nintendo Direct or something, or a earnings meeting or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Could I don't think they're, they're going to announce back. anything much than they might, making yeah. one, and yeah, maybe might, when it will, might be released. Yeah, they might not have anything to show, but they might just <clears> announce their intentions for something new. I think maybe, I don't know, they just need to make it easier for themselves, for people to develop it with and stuff. They need third parties. That's just, I mean, it's stupid not to have third parties. But it's hard. I don't know, yeah. And then they need to, they need to make something that's actually next gen, not just a little bit better than PS3. And well, what they, yeah, what they need to do, with whatever they do next, is have it be out of the box, on a par with PS4 and Xbox One. Definitely. At least that way, you'll get your Call of Duties on it. Like, yeah, if it's yeah, closer yeah. architecturally to the new machines, you'd imagine a port isn't hard to do. Mm. So, you get all the third-party games. Like, Watch Dogs came out on PS4, PS3, Xbox One, everything, everything. at the same time. It came out on Wii U, what, six, seven months later? Yeah. yeah. So, like, the buzz is gone for it. Six, seven months later, no one's talking about Watch Dogs anymore. Yeah. yeah but They um, just need a machine on par that gets everything. I'd exactly. say it won't be backwards compatible either. Different architect- architectures are probably not. Because I, I, I don't know. I don't know any of the ins and outs, but that might have been why it was so hard to develop for. Because 
the console had to be backwards compatible as well. Yeah. And that's why they couldn't push graphics and stuff into the new one. <clears throat> no, because PS3 was backwards compatible with PS2 at the time. And yeah. that was... Well, that was harder to develop for, wasn't it? Or was it? Yeah, well, they had a built-in it's hard, but it was It was at first, like, but it still ran PS2 games and then PS3 games back in the day, like. Mm. Do you think Zelda now will be... Do you think that will go out on the Wii U or will it be moved I think, over? I think it's going to be moved over. They delayed it to 2016, so... Yeah, we'll just wait and see. So that's it, actually, yeah. Crazy, if they have delayed it, it could be a launch title for a new system if that's what they end up actually doing. That would be mental. They probably just went... Guys, look, this game is going to be actually badass. So um, we want to push the new console. So just, yeah, we'll just delay, quote unquote, on Wii U and just push it to... It will be badass because their horses don't run into trees. <laughs> yeah. Did we ever cover that? I don't know. I don't think so. Because remember in Red Dead, all the times your horses just run into a tree. Yeah. But that was the thing that they said in the video. It's like, oh, look at our horses. They don't run into trees. Well, it because, <laughs> wasn't it like the horse goes on kind of autopilot? Yeah, it kind of runs itself, and you because then you have free reign for combat and all that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah, the horse has the horse is smart enough <laughs> to avoid trees. Horse. If only real horses did that. Horse AI. What a what a world we live a in. Horse Al. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I I don't know if it's any good. See, I said I was going to get an Xbox. See, I would, would like to try that. I still new, probably would with the I new Zelda. Would. But um, I said I was going to get an Xbox as well when. Halo came out, but I don't know, I don't really have the funds. Halo, you know, my plan is to get an Xbox Halo when they come down a bit in price. Because yeah. right now there's no... In fairness though, 350 is grand. Oh, that's good, yeah. It's but... 350 at the minute. No, but yeah, no, it's not With a like terrible FIFA. price right now. Yeah. And in time. Yeah. Keep your eyes peeled as for a, Xbox games finally an, appearing on the channel. As an owner of a Xbox, um, I only like a handful of games, and I'm just waiting for Halo 5. See, that's the... Yeah, because I, I'll be honest, like, I liked the Halo. I did, I'm not a massive diehard fan, but I really liked them. And that would probably be the only reason I'd get it. But I realistically, as well, like you said, there's only a handful of games you like on it. Like, if we all had Xboxes, we'd all be playing on Xbox anyway. It's just yeah. that we all have Playstations. Like, a lot of the games you've played are multi-platform. <laughs> yeah. You could have played them on Xbox. Like, what Sony exclusives have you kind of played lately? Lately, yeah, but I rented Bloodborne for a few yeah, days. That's yeah. kind of it. Other than that, then everything we play is multi platform, so I made it kind of makes no difference. Well, actually, on. I do prefer the exclusives on Xbox so far. Well, Just, what do we have on PS4 at the minute? Bloodborne, the Infamous, uh, um, The Order, yeah, Killzone, Killzone, yeah. I really like Infamous Platinum Death, but hopefully, E3 now will give you because yeah. Microsoft have said they're going to focus on. Games. Uh, exclusive IPs so hopefully Sony kind of follow suit and show off because especially now that Uncharted has slipped from the end of the year mm. I think Sony have to show they might have to show one or two big things to get people excited not even doesn't even have to come out this year but just have like well I know this year we don't have Uncharted but next year we've got Uncharted and this and this do you know I, I said this every year but just just give us a new uh, getaway please Sony please <laughs> I don't know if it's happening. <laughs> you really want I know, to know. I know. Well, I don't know. Did I say it? Like, anyone who's like follows the channel, um, a few days ago we put up um, our, our top 10 cancelled games. And at number 8, I put in 8 Days, which was a game in development for PS3. But in April of like 2008 or something, I think it was, Sony confirmed the cancellation of both 8 Days and The Getaway. So... I, well, I'd like to see the getaway come back. France face. I, I want to see the getaway come back as well. It's just look, okay. The getaway one and one was unbelievable too, and it was good. But like, just imagine, imagine the power of the PS4 and like, just GTL London, but made by Sony. Just right. Oh. I don't remember if I said it in the video, but the only reason I put I picked eight days over the getaway was because the getaway had a chance. It had the getaway one, and it had Black Monday. Yeah. Whereas eight days looked amazing, but. That's all it ever did. It only ever got to look cool, do you know? Whereas at least the getaway, we did get a taste of it in two games already. Yeah, because I think I played getaway before GTA. <clears throat> I think. I can't remember, but I remember, yeah, the getaway was. It was unreal. I was like, because you know the way I could get, I don't know why it was a big thing for me, but I was like, I can drive police cars. Yeah, yeah. And then everyone moved out of yeah, it. Exactly. Like, I'm unreal. 
But I remember thinking, right, we're getting so off topic. Remember when we were talking about how many PlayStations that sold? I know. Yeah. But anyway, right, we, we jump onto a different topic now in a sec. But I do remember the first time getting into or playing the getaway and mm. like there, it was actual cars. Yeah. I remember yeah. getting into like a Fiat or something like, oh my God, there's a Fiat. <laughs> like, fuck GTA and they pretend like Banshees and all yeah. these imaginary cars. Like, this is a real car. I can actually rob this car. Yeah, it was a good game. Yeah, cause yeah, yeah, no, it was class. The combat was a bit weird. There was no radical. You kind of had to. You couldn't. Could you run people over? Uh, Ooh, no. I don't remember. I don't think you could. I'm not. Not sure. from what I remember. Because I don't think it was an 18s game. No, it was. Was it 18s? 18s? I think it was 18s. Yeah. Because I cashed oh. in on that pure uh, Guy Ritchie lock sock, two small lock barrels. Yeah. Yeah. Already. yeah. <clears throat> God, those, I'm watching that when I go home. They're such good movies. <laughs> Right. You're getting all your hype now. I know. It's not happening, mm-hmm. Brand, don't worry. We move on. We move on. Speaking of movies, Connor, me and you, we mentioned at the start of the show, we went to see Age of Ultron during the week. Oh, yes, yes. And it was, I think it was amazing. It was a little was, bit amazing, yeah. It was so good. Everything in it. I thought it had much better, not even much better, but Hawkeye was good this time around mm. he was a cool character um yeah no everything about it. the only thing i didn't like not even didn't like the only thing i thought was a bit weird was the mid credit scene it kind of it was see yeah it looked cool but it no well i'm grand because i'm not a nerd because <laughs> i honestly like i don't read into any of this shit <clears throat> i know what's going on purely because of movies i'm the same so i don't really care who's who and but like, not even uh, that. It was just it was the line he says <clears throat> made no sense because okay. he'd nothing to do with it anyway. Okay, we'll talk off off podcast later oh, on. Oh yeah, I'll tell yeah, you what yeah, I mean. Yeah, because kind of but, spoilers. Yeah, but um, yeah, you know, no, I thoroughly, no, yeah, okay. thoroughly enjoyed. You know, because it's I I really enjoyed. Yeah, no, it was good that um, Hawkeye was in it more because, as I said to you, like, well, he had an actual character act this time. Yeah, like, he yeah, had a yeah. there was a whole story about him. Yeah, he was a bit more central, a bit more pivotal to the storyline this time around than he had been in the first one. Yeah, it was so good actually. Did you hear that the director? I can never pr- pronounce his name right. So, Josh Whedon. Yeah, yeah, he got in trouble because you know that dude that he killed in the first Avengers movie that's in Agents. Of- oh yeah, yeah, Coulson. and then yeah, and then he so he also made made the TV show, and then he was in the TV show. And then in Avengers 2, he's obviously dead. So they were like, uh, what's actually happened here? Why'd you bring him back for the TV show? And then he's not in the movie. How, Like, he got in trouble with the studio over that. Right. Apparently. I don't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so I'm not 100% sure. But as far as the movies go, the Avengers don't know Coulson is alive. I think so, yeah. They don't, like. So remember that scene in the first one where Coulson dies and... Nick Fury gives him the speech and he gives Captain America the kind of collectible card that Colton yeah. had in his pocket because it meant so much to him, the mission, all that kind of thing. And that kind of was one of the driving forces behind them all coming together, the Avengers coming together to fight like the final battle kind of thing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So Colson's death kind of brought the team together and for them to turn around now and find out he's not actually dead is a bit like what kind of fuck you shield you manipulated us into <laughs> yeah. doing this kind of thing and then like where well, we can't if we can't trust the good guys who can we trust so I think for them to still work they need to think he's still dead yeah you know? makes sense now again it could turn out he could be in the next one like there's still two more Avengers movies planned and God only knows after that but we'll see we'll just wait and see one thing we did see was the trailer for Mad Max oh, as well though oh I yeah, I didn't realize it was out so soon. I didn't. Yeah, until you said it to me, I was like, "Damn!" Because I saw I saw a trailer on TV. I was like, "Oh, I can't wait for this. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go watch this." Fourteenth of May. I was like, "That's like next week." Yeah. What? Like, what is going on? I thought it was out at the end. I thought it was out closer to when the game was coming out. Being honest. Yeah, but it's not movie time. The game isn't. Oh, I know that. I don't but... know how that worked out because they obviously knew when they bought the rights or when the rights were sold to make the game. That there was a movie in the works. I know that, but you, you'd imagine they kind of cash in oh, on no, each other. Mean, yeah. Like with the Star Wars games and yeah. the movie. Like they're not linked at all, but 
maybe they have that much faith in the game. Yeah, possibly. Or it could be. No, it looks class. It yeah. does look class. But again, even just from a marketing point of view, it would make more sense to have them releasing closer together. I but know, it looks I, so good. It look, yeah. Oh, it's like just, all the, the stunt scenes and just everything. I love the poster, just like the newest one. It's just off the top. It's like, what a lovely day. And then all this carnage behind them, like all the trucks and oh, just. Plus, like I did, I enjoyed the old Max Max. Max Max. Max Max. Max Max. Max, 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 Max. I enjoyed the old Mad Max movies and I genuinely, I I like, I really like Tom Hardy. Yeah, same. Um, He seems like a cool dude. Um, So I like him and stuff and him playing the central character in a movie franchise that I already really like is Fucking two thumbs up for me. Actually, it's going to be really good. I saw a Tom Hardy movie last night. The Drop. So I watched that. With him and James Gandolfini. Mm. He plays a really weird character in it. It's as if, yeah, he is obviously slow in the, the movie. like. <laughs> but then he turns... I'm, I'm not going to... It's a nice set for it. I, no, but he's just like... The way he talks is he's, like... He's one of God's special children. Yeah, but it's a really... I recommend anybody watch it. It's so good. Is that new out? Newish, I think. Before we move on, before before we move on for a sec, Bran, did you watch Pacific Rim yet? Nope. Right. Oh you God. stay quiet for the rest of this podcast. You think about <laughs> what you've done. Um, staying on movies, next year is going to be, next year's going to be amazing. Is Wait. it? Batman vs Superman. <gasps> oh yeah. Right. Yeah. We all know how much we all love that. Yeah. yeah. During the week, we got the whole cast pick for Suicide Squad. Oh yeah. yeah. And. We got confirmation today that the Assassin's Creed movie goes into filming September this year for release Christmas next year. Oh, nice. So next year, next year's going to be badass. Next yeah. year we've got so much DC. We've got more <clears> Marvel. <throat> I don't even remember what Marvel movies are coming out next year. There's Just, probably that many yeah. of them. And then we've got Assassin's Creed. I think Assassin's Creed is going to have big expectations on it. Yeah. Because it's got... It's a really established franchise that everybody knows and loves. It's a it's a computer game movie, which are generally kind yeah. of shit. But it has really good people working behind it, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Michael Fassbender. He's a class actor. Just yeah. it's Michael Fassbender, for God's sake. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one. It's, yeah, no, yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> is it actually do we know when it's based? I don't know. I don't think they've said. You'd imagine they might go with an original setting. Because, mm-hmm. like, there's talk of doing, like, you know, the the Last of Us movie that's going coming out. Like, they've said there's certain scenes in the game that wouldn't translate well to film. So they're kind of going to rework and tell the same story as the game did. Yeah. So. Just reading here, Ubisoft is apparently working on five other movies based on games. Far- I didn't realize this at all. Far Cry. Rabbits, Watch Dogs, Splinter Cell, and Ghost Recon. God damn. Right. I Based off that. that, Far Cry, there's already been one Far Cry movie that was terrible. Oh. Uwe Boll directed yeah. Notorious <laughs> shitter on computer game movies. Yeah. But, you know, he's weird. He, yeah. He makes shitty movies in what is already known as shitty movies. He does them on purpose. Well, he gets weird funding. Like, yeah. you give him money and you get tax breaks and stuff. I know, so yeah. that's why he keeps making movies. Right, you've got Far Cry. Could the rabbits that be the TV show thing? Movies, or it is, says, though. Is it? Yeah, true. Well, that says movies. But rabbits, yeah, you'd imagine that's going to be a computer generated family comedy thing. Yeah. Probably a bit like the Minions movie. Oh, so yeah. rabbits just make sounds. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What well, could they do with like a Smurfs on it? You could do whatever. So, what's yeah. live. Watchdogs movie. Oh, a live action hybrid thing. Yeah. See, Sony. Right, we're jumping all around the place. But Sony are already going to reboot the Smurfs movies as well. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, yeah. But they're going back to normal. Yeah. Like, in fairness, the Smurfs movies that have come out were very far removed from the original source material. They were in the city and stuff, weren't they? Yeah, they were in, like, New York yeah. with just actual people and stuff, which was kind of weird. It was like the Chipmunks movie. But that made sense for Chipmunks. But Splint- Splinter Cell, I was going to say. Smurfs was a different thing. Watch Dogs. That yeah. could just be a cool action movie. Yeah. Depends on the actor, though. Is Tom Hardy still attached to Splinter Cell? I think so. I watched that. <laughs> yeah. I watched, I watched yeah. the shit out of that movie. Yeah. Ghost Recon would be cool as well. That's just pure futuristic. War, yeah. We need War. new one of them as well. Which? It's Ghost actually, Recon. It's been weird that they're making a Watch Dogs movie over like a Rainbow Six movie. Now, I know obviously Tom Clancy, there's been a lot of movies on Tom Clancy, but, oh well, his novels and stuff, but 
Rainbow Six Moon would be class. This is going to be swat. I know, but I like that. <laughs> no, it could be cool, but it's still... Yeah. Name two characters from Rainbow Six. Oh, no. <laughs> It'd just be a cool action movie. You know That's what, what I mean. Right? They already exist. At least Watch Dogs, you have Aiden Pears. God, that's been awesome. awesome that. Stoic. It's just, that's how he says it in the game. I was <laughs> so, yeah. I was so hyped for that game and just turned out to be... He's like, meh. my niece has been murdered. I ate them pears. Oh, Let's get revenge. Movies. Our movies. favorite movie is getting a sequel. John Wick. Yeah. John, John Wick, Wick officially John Wick is getting a sequel. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah no one how many John Wicks John Wick 2 will get. Imagine. Seven <laughs> out of five. Because John Wick already got one John Wick. And that's, that's pretty high. That's, it's getting, that's the highest. It's getting get, like, seven full-on revenge mode John Wicks out of five Retire John Wicks. How is it going to be amazing? Though? What are they going to do? Kill his hamsters? <laughs> like I reckon they'll probably end up. They could easily do it. Like kind of with Taken too. Do you know the way? Like he took out. Like in Taken, he killed your man. Yeah. And then in the second one, your man's father wants it's, to get revenge on him or whatever. It's going to be a new Taken. I think. Uh, not as a s- successful. Um, well, maybe not as ex- successful, but it's going to yeah, be a new. Actually, speaking of John Wick, made nearly a hundred million dollars. So. You know, it wasn't exactly any kind of slouch itself. And it was out in America. It was out in America ages. Or yeah. No, it was out here ages or something. No, out in America ages and it came out here three weeks ago. Yeah. Right, I just want <clears throat> to suggest a title. and I don't know yet, but for this podcast, I think we should just call it Tangents. Yeah. Because I just okay. want to say, um, I found this. out Marla Manson had a new album out because of oh. John Wick. And it's after coming out today that John, John Wick... That Marla Manson's. <laughs> oh my god, right. Uh, start again. Because I'm so confused. Go on. Take two. Right. Marla Manson had yes. a song featured in the original John Wick. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Killing Strangers, it's called. It's a really good song. John Wick is the reason I found out Marla Manson even has a new album coming out. But the new physical release of his album comes on black discs, which are repurposed old original PlayStation discs. That's really cool. So if you remember like oh, the original PS1. How'd yeah, you play them? They're just CDs. Like they were CD kind of ROM discs, you know what I mean? But um, <sighs> they got them directly from Sony. They're the black nice. disc. Because the black disc was only done. The only point of the black disc was to just have the PlayStation 1 games look a bit different. Um, and Marlon Manson's using the old PlayStation 1 discs for his new album. So they're like... They're, how do they have them still hanging around? Oh no, I read, read that. Read that. The discs first appear pure black, but with the help of a new thermal layer, they turn white during playback. What? That is badass, because it's reflecting on his new album. So, it turns from black to white. Yeah. The dark and light <clears throat> theme of the Polar Emperor. So, wow, that's... Well, that's I want really one. Yeah. Just, just how do you, would you look at it, though? <laughs> the CD, need the <laughs> CD player, but like... You'll only know because it will come out white. Or you, put it in, you put it into your CD player. Oh, let's stop being white as soon as you stop. Or as you're walking around town listening to your Sony Discman. Oh, God. Going steady so it doesn't skip. <laughs> I remember that. Those days. Killing strangers. I was like, oh, damn. Curb. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, that's, that's our weird Marilyn Manson movie talk. Ah, it's so weird. I want one just to have a look at it. You know, that whole <clears throat> changing color thing is bloody amazing. And with that, slightly... <laughs> shambolic ramble cast um, I think we'll we'll wrap this bad boy up cool I know it was rambly but it was alright yeah I like it we it. scraped together all the news that happened in the last week together it was a slow news week what can we do Um, if you like what you've heard you're easily impressed for one but thank you <laughs> Um, please like subscribe follow us on facebook Follow us on Twitter. You don't follow on Facebook. You like on Facebook. Yeah, Benny. Do all that social media stuff. You know you love us. We love you too. We love you more. What? Subscribe. Subscribe. All three um, people will get YouTube. that joke. Yeah. Subscribe. And all that jazz. And with that, folks, Bran, say goodbye to people at home. Goodbye. Come. Goodbye. And with that, folks, we bid you adieu. Till next Wednesday. And we're back to do it all over again.